Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and in this video, we're gonna see that how we can poke multiple times into the same container. Now, not only that, we are gonna go inside the container via multiple ways and I'm gonna explain you which is the best way to get inside a container and prompt ourselves a shell. Now, in the one of the previous video, we talked that it's not only about the bash shell, we have multiple other shells as well. Z shell is the most common one. We have bash shell, like the most common among the entire Unix system. And we have a couple of more as well, but really we are not much worried about the shells here. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you one more way of getting into uh, any kind of container that you are having. So for that, I have these, uh, we have to get the ID. So for that, we are gonna simply say uh, Docker, and we're gonna simply say PS hyphen hyphen all. So when I get that, I have a lot of things going on. So if I just look at this, uh, this one is my Mongo image and I can just copy the ID for that Mongo. By the way, you can copy the ID for any other as well, but I highly recommend to just copy the ID for the Mongo because we are gonna be poking into that. It makes a sense, continuation, so yeah. There we go, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna hit Control L to clean this up. Now, there are a couple of ways. The first way of getting inside a container and accessing its shell, the way or the command that I showed you was simply docker, then run the executable and passing on a flag of dash IT, then the container name in the format of ID, and we can take a bash shell. That worked absolutely fine in our previous videos. No problem in that. Now there are a couple of variations in this command as well. Let me show you that. We have seen this works. So let me show you one more time that yes, this works. If I go ahead, hit enter, and looks like my container is not running. So I have to first run it. So I'm gonna simply say docker start and then the ID name of this container. So there we go, it's running now. And now I can run this command. So there we go, I have got a bash shell. That's great, absolutely fine, no problem in that. Now let me hit Control D to get out of that. I'm out of this. Now let me show you a variation of this through which you can get inside that. So a lot of people you're gonna see are gonna try with the, just by typing the name Mongo and the bash. When they hit enter, they see, hey, there is no such name like that Mongo. Because in your container, this is not recognized by the name of that image. But in order to avoid this particular error and just mentioning your image with the name of just Mongo, some people opt for a completely bizarre solution or alternative, which is not at all good. So I'm gonna simply say uh, Docker, and we can actually stop this and the ID, and there we go. So right now, none of the processes is running. We can verify it by saying Docker PS, and there we go, nothing is running. So what they try to do is at the time of running, just that container, they try to get inside that container at the time or at the runtime. That would be better. So we're gonna simply say that we are gonna run into docker run, then we pass on an IT flag with the run, which we haven't discussed yet. We have always used the IT command with the exec, which is by the way, a right way. And then they say, I want to go into the Mongo and give me the bash shell as well. So does this command work? Let's hit enter and see for ourselves. And voila, we are inside the container directly. So you might be thinking, hey, this is more fun. In just one command, I can not only run that, but I can also get inside that container. In the other version of the command that I showed you, we have to start the Mongo first with that specific ID or however you want to run that. We have to grab the ID. So again, you have to run the PS command. So two commands so far. And then the third command, we actually get into that. So how come you are recommending those three commands instead of one when all of them are doing the same job? The reason for that is when these containers are being designed, just if you left out a few containers like Hello World, BusyBox, very minimum one, the most containers are designed in such a way that the default command that you really want to run should be running. These are sometimes the deployment servers, sometimes some databases which want to run some specific services at the time of running. And when you override that default command, make sure you understand this, whenever this is the image name and entire command, this is the overwrite on the default command that you are giving. Once an overwrite is being given to the default command, the container always assumes that this is the default command and I have to run that. Please make sure you don't do that 
In some certain cases, it is acceptable, but in majority of cases, I don't recommend you to run this command. What I recommend you is just start the Docker container, then using the PSID, get the ID of that specific container, and then get inside the container using exec command. That is a more formal way and more way, more easier way in which you will avoid errors. This can cause problem. Although it looks like that, hey, we got the job done, but this can be something which can trouble us in the future. So, no, no, don't do that. So we're gonna hit this control D to exit that. By the way, you can also manually type exit to exit that. No problem in the shortcut there. You can hit the shortcut as well. So there we go. Now we're gonna do uh, another interesting thing. Uh, we're gonna poke into this uh, multiple time and we're gonna see some of the stuff. So uh, let me just show you one more thing up here uh, as an assignment if you want to go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna give you an assignment. Uh, let's go that. So first and foremost, uh, we're gonna hit a Docker uh, dash, not dash, ps dash dash all. Okay, so we can see that our Mongo is being uh, invoked a couple of times and we can see you can also invoke it multiple times. You just have to start Mongo and it's gonna give you two different ID. So what I want you to do is take two instances of MongoDB, make sure their IDs are totally different. Now go ahead and create file in that. In the first ID, you're going to create a file name uh, with your name. Uh, let's just say whatever your name is .txt. So just create a text file. And I'm going to show you how to create that in a minute. By the way, if you want to create a file, you can use the touch facility, which is there in the bash as well as in the Z shell. So touch and let's just say your name is Hitesh also. And you just type .txt. So go ahead, get a bash shell into this container and create a file wherever you want, just in the root is also fine. Uh, just create a file with the name of your name.txt, then uh, stay there and open up another shell and copy another ID, it should have a different ID. Go ahead and uh, create, get inside that shell and create another file there which is, let's just say instagram.txt. And just check by doing the ls in both the container, you're gonna see that both container are totally separate. We have already discussed that. And one file is there, but other file is not there. So pretty easy, very fun exercise, but it's gonna clear a whole lot of concept in you. Make sure you click a photo of that and post me up on Instagram as well. I would love to see that you are following up the series as I'm absolutely enjoying making videos in the Docker. So that's it for this video and congratulations. Now you are a decent beginner in the Docker. For sure, the future video are gonna get you more uh, knowledge about the Docker. If you're gonna hit that subscribe button, that's it for this video and let's catch up in the next one.